Okay, so I'm going to attempt to show you a quick way to find the center of things, and I'm going to do a little mock-up of the coffee grocer that I hope to build eventually. We'll see. Um, so far, things seem to be progressing pretty well, but uh, life doesn't usually work out that way. So, as you can see, here is one that I've already found the center on. And uh, it doesn't take a lot, just a few seconds. Set up to doing it is pretty good. You'll need some layout die, marking fluid, a scribe of some sort, anything sharp will do. Um, sometimes I just use a nail, but there are professional scribes that will give you a much finer line to follow. And camera doesn't want to focus on it, so you don't get to see it. Then you're going to need a framing square. Simple. And a speed square and a little clamp to clamp them together. You're going to clamp your speed square to your framing square right at the corner of the inside face. Pretty easy. Once you've done that, then you're just going to take your layout die on a clean surface that you've cleaned with alcohol that I didn't because I'm not that worried about this particular one. And you just find this, get pretty close to the center, it doesn't have to be right on it. And then once you've done that, you're going to let it dry, which will not take that long. And don't breathe in the fumes because it's, it's acetone. Okay, so once it's dried, then you're going to take your framing square and you're just going to lay it up here on the bottom of your circle, whatever it is, in this case a pot. Then you're going to take your scribe, once both edges are touching, you're going to take your scribe and just strike a line. You're going to want to do this at least three times, not two, but three. And the reason being is because, just because they, just because Walmart says it's round doesn't mean it is. Looks like this one is pretty dead gum round. I'm very pleased with that. All right, so this, there are your little lines, which the camera does not want to focus on at all. However, you can see them intersecting. And that's where you will then take a punch and set into those lines, into that intersection, and strike it with a hammer, or... And you should have a nice, fine dot, which I did not get that well. That's okay. For this... That's good enough for this demonstration. Okay, I'm not gonna get into it. I know my movies suck, thank you. Anyways, now let me give a um, layout here of how this will go together. This is the outside pan. I'll remove the handles and insulate above the top and cut a portion of the bottom away so that a propane burner or an electric element can go and actually heat up inside of there. This drum will go inside to be spun around. This one will be stationary, this one will, be, will spin. The whole point of this one is to help the heat stay inside of there so that I control where it goes and how hot it gets. The other part of the equation will be this piece here, this unit here. This is the mix motor for a, uh, a bread maker. Now, I got two different ones to try, but it's probably going to be that one because that one has a DC motor, so it'll be a little bit easier to control. This one has an AC motor, which is very nice, very quiet, so I may turn it into a fan. And uh, a little bit higher torque, but it's a little bit more complicated with these two gears. 
So uh, that's a little bit more things that can fail. So we're going to probably go with that DC motor. It will be mounted to the back here. And I may mount it off to the side or I may turn it around. I haven't decided, but it will be held away from the heat and it will be separated by a baffle. And uh, I may put an exhaust fan in there just as an added measure. But the whole unit will go together over a heater and spin the drum over a flame. And some baffles inside will keep the coffee moving. And that is the concept so far. Now, I wish my movie editing skills were a little bit better, but they are not. I just don't have the time. I wish I did. But um, that's a quick walkthrough. Hopefully that answered some questions. Um, if it didn't, I hope it raised some good questions. Um, another option that I've explored was taking round heating elements and applying them at angles towards from the bottom. Um, obviously not inside of the enclosure. Um, there would be some benefits for this. It would consume about 1400 watts. I toyed with the idea of infrared heaters, but I don't know anything about them, so I'd have to learn a lot more before I decided to make that plunge. I've also toyed with this heater, this heating element. Uh, this one is about 1300 watts, and uh, pulls, doesn't pull a whole lot of amperage, and it does get hot enough. But it also takes up a lot of space, so I haven't decided on that either. Anyways, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video.